welcome back to my channel. I have been on a non-fiction kick lately, meaning that I have gravitated towards reading non-fiction books, buying non-fiction books. By the way, there are a lot of book hauls coming your way. And that has inspired me to do this video about some of my favorite non-fictional books out there as well as some of the books that are on my current TBR. But that TBR might be exploding in the upcoming weeks. So last night I took a look at my shelves and I found my absolute favorite titles of non-fiction that I've read over the years prior to booktube, during booktube, after booktube. No, that's not correct. I'm going to start this video with showing you those recommendations. Now, when it comes to non-fiction, it always differs what we all like to read about. Some people like to read about other people, biographies. Other people like to read about subjects that they are interested in. And those subjects may be so diverse. It can be history, it can be alcohol, it can be writing, it's basically so many different subjects. So obviously the books I'm going to recommend to you are books that I felt personally interested in and maybe you might also want to pick them up. So the first book I have here was a book that my university professor recommended to all of us, Nickel and Dimed by Barbara Ehrenreich. Basically this author decided to go to the United States and be undercover in low-wage America. She tried to explore this low-wage society of people who had to have two or three or even more jobs in order to provide for their families. She tried to find out what they actually earned and for what work they did. This was such an eye-opener and also a very scary read compared to how we have it here in Denmark. I mean, these conditions were deplorable and really an important piece of work i think then i have here in order to live by yunmi park which is a book i read recently and fell in love with right from the beginning even though it is a very devastating piece of work about this child who grows up in north korea and who tries to escape that country which was not very easy bear in mind that this author is only in her 20s today so she grew up in 90s north korea and even though it's only about 20 30 years ago it's incredible these conditions that people lived under and that they still do live under unfortunately people are basically raised in a bubble in which you have no idea about what is going on in the outside world you only know that your country is the best and everything else is hell so no one wanted to escape north korea but at the same time they were living under such deplorable conditions famine no work, no way to provide for your family. Yeonmi Park herself had to live without food for several days at a time along with her sisters and the rest of her family. And of course, those conditions were not acceptable, but that's what she was used to. She thought that this was the best way to live because this is, after all, the best country to be raised in. Whenever you go to school, you are taught to do maths according to, not according to apples and bananas as we are used to in our world, but according to those amazing North Koreans versus those damn Yankees from the America. I was shocked when I read this book. I knew about these conditions, but not that this was the actual case. So definitely a book I very much appreciated and that has gotten me very much interested into reading more about North Korea. Watching the English by Kate Fox, which is a book about the hidden rules of English behavior. This book was more of a light read, which I read many years ago. It gives you a rare insight into British society or English society and how people live, how they talk, how they behave in this country and it was such a funny read. It has been some years since I read this book but I remember clearly the section about lines and how people have to respect the lines in England otherwise you are being disrespectful. I also remember the chapters about the pubs and just in general how people like to behave, what they like to talk about, which is the weather apparently. 
such a funny read and definitely one I think you should pick up if you have any interest in the English people. Next I have a chunker and that is Steve Jobs autobiography. Actually it was written by Walter Isaacson but it was written through many many interviews with Steve Jobs. Another book that I read many years ago I read it because it was hyped back then and I am quite an Apple fan. I do after all own a lot of their devices and I truly adore them. So I was interested to read about the man behind and this was fascinating. I mean it does come with a lot of computer language and a lot of chapters about how to create the perfect machine but even that was interesting to me even though I'm not much of a technician. By the way look at this back cover. I really like it. This is the first Mac as far as I remember. This book also follows his life up until his very last days. I believe he died from cancer. So it's very captivating in the way that you also really get to know the man behind Apple. Next we have a book that I finished yesterday and that is actually the reason behind me being inspired to do this video and that is Stephen King's On Writing a Memoir of the Craft. This book is, as you can see from the title, about how to write and how to be the best writer you can be, according to Stephen King. Stephen King is, after all, one of the most prolific and popular horror authors out there. So I think he has something to say about this craft. He has written so many books over the years and I think he knows what he's doing. Even though I'm not the biggest Stephen King fan, I do find some of his books to be way too long and way too dragging. I still really appreciate some of his books and also all of the ideas he comes up with. So this book is divided into three sections, the first one being about his childhood and how that formed him into a writer, the second one being an actual toolbox on how to write good fiction or non-fiction actually, it could be anything. And the last section is about an accident that Stephen King was in while writing this book and that nearly cost him his life. All three parts were so fascinating. I think the part about his childhood was my favorite but the toolbox part was fascinating and the last part was too short basically. I didn't want for this to end and I truly truly recommend it. Whether you just like Stephen King and want to know more about him or whether you want to become a writer and write your own book. This is like sent from heaven. Then I have The Glass Castle by Janet Walls. I also read this one recently. I adored it. This one is about Janet Walls growing up in America with her two siblings and her parents who were adventurers. They did not want to stick to one place. They wanted to move on, get into the car and then move on to the next place to stay and naturally they weren't able to really provide for their children because they couldn't really stick to a job, they couldn't really make an income, especially because of the father who was somewhat of an alcoholic and the mother who was an artist so she didn't have a stable job. This was interesting because it shows you an alternative to growing up and what it is like to raise children, how you can raise children in a different way from what we are all used to. Jeanette didn't go to school and the same goes for her siblings and she was so fed up with everything when she was in her teens so that she tried to break free and then it's up to you to read the book and see if she actually managed to do that. But I will tell you that this book is amazing and the movie as well was almost as good as the book. And the last book I want to recommend before I move on to the next section of this video is The Year of Magical Thinking by Joanne Didion. This one is devastating. It's one of those very heavy books that will kind of put a stone to your heart but also enlighten you in a very unique way because this one is about Joanne's experience with losing her husband and her daughter in a matter of days and how she dealt with that grief of hers which is unbearable to even think about. Such a magical piece of writing. Joan Didion knows her craft and she writes impeccably beautiful and also the story behind is just devastating but so important I think. So now I've made it on to the section about some 
TBR books on my non-fiction shelves. The first one are books that I own and that I haven't read. And then the last bunch of books are going to be books that I don't own yet, but that are on my wish list. I'm currently reading this one, The Diary of a Bookseller by Jean Bythel. This one is about a bookseller and it's basically his diary. But the funny thing about it is that the tone of this book, the tone of his voice, is so pessimistic that it actually feels humoristic. It feels funnily enlifting to read this, even though it is quite pessimistic. For instance, this owner of the bookshop, he has a Facebook page in which he obviously updates everything that goes on in the bookshop, but also he writes about the customers and everything they do and say wrong. I wouldn't want to be one of his customers in fear of being written about in that Facebook page, but other than that, this gives you a beautiful insight into what it's actually like to be a bookseller, which is not always the greatest, greatest job. Can you believe it or not? This one is interesting because, well, it's called Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil by John Berend, and it's about a crime that took place in America. Some shootings were happening, people didn't know really what was going on, and I think it also comes with some ghosts in some way. But the funny thing about this one is that it's supposedly written like fiction, with dialogue and deep characters, but it is based on actual events. I'm interested to read it. I don't really know much about this event, but I guess I will find out. Then we have Wild by Cheryl Strait. I made the mistake of watching the movie before actually getting the book and reading it. But I will say the movie is what inspired me to actually buy this book because the thought of hiking through Western America really fascinates me. I would love to do something like that myself, even though it's a dream. I'm not sure it's ever going to happen. It's something that fascinates me and I really want to read about her personal account taking this journey and walking for miles and miles and miles, trying to find out things about herself, things about her life, and also trying to really push her body to the limit. Another one on my shelves is History of Nations, How Their Identities Were Forged by... Well, it was edited by Peter Furtado. Now, this one was a gift and I am not sure yet exactly what it's about other than I think it's about different countries, selected countries and their histories and how the history of that country has shaped the country into what it is today. And that sounds interesting to me. I am, after all, a humanist. I teach languages, so this definitely sounds interesting. And it's not one I would have picked up, I think, by myself, but now that I own it, I kind of want to read it and really get to know these countries. And then I have two books here, which I had actually planned on unhauling. I have here To the River and also The Trip to Echo Spring on Riders and Drinking, both by Olivia Lang. If you have read either of these books and if you love them or if you can recommend them or not recommend them, let me know in the comments because I'm still on the fence about holding on to these or getting rid of them. Okay, I have been filming for 19 minutes now, so I better get hurried on the last titles, which are books that I still haven't bought, but that are on my wish list. One of the books on the top of my wish list is Talking As Fast As I Can by Lauren Graham. Lorelei from Gilmore Girls. I want to read it just because I loved Gilmore Girls and I kind of want to get a backstage view on what it was like filming that show. But I also kind of want to know about Lauren as a person and what she thinks about acting and her life in general. Another book on the top of my list is Spinster, Making a Life of One's Own by Kate Bullock. Naturally, because I'm a spinster myself, I'm 30 years old, I'm single, and I am making a pretty good life of my own, I think. So I think it will be interesting to read her account of this situation and see what she comes up with. I've also written down Between the World and Me by Tanahishi Coach. This book is pretty hyped. And it has been for the past year, which is the reason why I still haven't picked it up. But now I think I want to do so. I want to read about 
race and racism in general and this account is supposedly magnificent when breath becomes air by paul kalanitsi is about a surgeon who one day is diagnosed with cancer and that takes him to the other side of the table in which he is now the patient and i think it will be so interesting to read about that experience and i also really find it fascinating that his wife actually finished this book because unfortunately he died himself before he could do so and then the last book i have written down is another book by Sheol Strait, the one who also wrote Wild, but I've written down tiny beautiful things of hers because it has amazing reviews and it's about life in general, how we can find beauty in life, I think at least. I thought it sounded interesting enough for me to one day pick it up and hopefully read it. I will read Wild first and if I really like that one then this one is the natural choice next. Okay so that's it for this video. I hope that you liked it even though it is pretty long as far as I can see from my counter. It is now on 22 minutes. I apologize. But really I don't because non-fiction books are great and I want to share my love for them and I would also really love to get some recommendations from you guys so please let me know in the comments if you have your own favorite non-fiction book that you think I should know about. I'm open for all suggestions. I better stop this video now so thank you so much for watching and until my next video happy reading.